Hi, my name is Lynn. Welcome back to my channel and today I have a super duper exciting video for you guys. This is one of my two Lady Midnight themed videos I'm bringing to you guys. They are both videos that um, I wouldn't normally do. This one's more on the side of the norm for me. In this video, I will be talking about my crackpot theories for Lord of Shadows, which is the second book in The Dark Artifices. And if you didn't know, Lady Midnight was the first book in The Dark Artifices, but I don't know how you couldn't know that. Let me start off by saying, do not watch this video if you have not read Lady Midnight. And if you have not read Lady Midnight and you want to read Lady Midnight, make sure you've read The Mortal Instruments and The Infernal Devices before you do so. I have a Lady Midnight book talk. I will link that down below for you guys if you want to see it. If you don't know what Crackpot Theory is, it's basically these theories that, you know, readers make up for the next few books or whatever, and they're like really, really crazy. I have more than one Crackpot Theory, um, that I have to share with you guys but they all kind of intertwine with each other so that's why I'm sharing them all in this video. The second time I read Lady Midnight I like tabbed so many things and I numbered it and I annotated it and I was just preparing for this video so I'm so excited to start this video and let's just get started. So my first theory is the one that doesn't really relate to most of my theories my other theories but I want to mention it anyway because I thought it could somehow relate to them but it is from a quote from page 531 when Emma's having that dream with her parents and her dad says trust him he will come back he will come to you and he will need your help trust James Carstairs now James Carthier is obviously Jem and we all love Jem and Jem said, well Jem did appear in this book with Tessa and Jem did say before that he would like to be like more involved with Emma's life. So I'm thinking that a Jem will be featured more in Lady Midnight and I think he's going to have a bigger role and I think this role is going to have something to do with something else that's big that's going to take place in Lord of Shadows. And I don't know, I think that's what's going to happen because Jem seems like a good asset to the characters and he will help them, especially Emma. And I think Emma's going to go through something in the next book and Jem's going to be there. She has, she's going to have to team up with Jem and Tessa and that's going to be amazing if that happens because you know I love Jem and Tessa, I love my Inspiral Devices characters and I love Emma. So if they, you know, all team together, it will just be even more fantastic. So obviously the thing that's on everybody's mind is the Parapetai bond and how you can break it because we all want Gemma to have. This theory isn't actually a theory of my own. I got it from someone off Instagram and I feel honestly so bad right now because I feel like I'm stealing someone else's theory and I can't like credit them for it so if you're ever watching this video the person you may have the theory and maybe you, you never will but if you ever do watch this video I'm thanking you so much right now because this is such a good theory and I just had to mention it. So there is a quote in this book that's also from Emma's dream when her mom said it and it is and remember a blade made by Wayland Smith can cut anything. So does that mean it can cut a pair of a tie bond? Because, like, if we're taking that literally, it can cut anything. That means it can cut anything. And a parapetai bond is technically in anything. So, technically, Cortana can cut the parapetai bond. Like, I don't know how that would happen. You have to cut off your arm because isn't Emma's parapetai rune on her arm? Or could she just, like, like cut it off like that, you know, that would probably really, really hurt. So, again, most of these crackpot theories are going to be about the parapetai bond between Julian and Emma, so I have a lot of theories around that and, like, the outcome of what's going to happen in book two because they're, like, in love with each other. And one of those is, it is, Jem told Emma that, um, if you're romantically involved with your parapetai, you will obviously, you, you'll get powers, right? So, we never really thought that they already had powers because before Jem told Emma that they were already in love and they already did romantic stuff together, Julia and Emma, and I think a lot of people skimmed over this, but what the heck, when they were in the cave and, um... They were fighting Malcolm and Julian and Mark ran off. Emma had this thing where she 
thought she heard Julian, and her and Julian would sort of talk back and forth mentally. Telepathy. Um, that could be one of the things, like, you get magic powers, and telepathy isn't something Shadow Hunters can do. So, maybe since they were already romantically involved at that point, that was one of, like, the early signs that they were getting magic powers. Like, that could be something, because, what, what, what was that? Maybe, maybe it was all in her head, maybe it was nothing, but you know what? That, that could be a sign. I don't think it was nothing, because I, when I was reading that the first time, I was too, like, in the moment. I just passed over it, and it was I read it a second time, I was like, whoa, that's weird, Shadowhunters can't do that. So, M did say that when two Parapetai are in love, like both are in love with each other, they will get driven to madness, and he did say that would happen if it was like a one-sided love, but I'm assuming that it's not going to be a one-sided love, even with Emma faking this relationship with Mark. Um, she does still love him, and I'm pretty sure she will still love him, no matter what happens, and Julian the same. So, this is the thing. People have this theory, and I'm not completely supportive of this theory, and I don't like people saying it, but when I reread the book and I read certain passages, I was like, oh, well, there's some points that could support that theory people are having. That theory is that Julian is going to become really, like, not a bad guy, but just, like, not a good person. I love Julian. Like, I absolutely love him. And the fact that people say that really, like, breaks my heart. But I found these quotes and... I was like, oh, damn it, that's, ah! So this is my big, like, my biggest theory in this video, and I found in the book, I was, like, searching through the book after when I read the second time, and I found all these things that I'm going to call Easter eggs, and all these Easter eggs connect to this one theory, um, that Julian is going to become evil in a sort of sense, but not the bad guy. He's just not going to be the boy he used to be. Not a theory that I completely support, but I realize that there's a lot of things that can support the series, so I'm just going to talk about them in this video because who knows, maybe that's where this story is going. So the first quote that kind of supports that theory is from Kieran, and he says, Everyone is more than one thing. We are more than single actions we undertake, whether they be good or evil. Everyone is more than one thing. Characters aren't just a black and white, okay? They, so, okay, this is what I'm thinking. This could sort of relate to Julian when you think about it, right? Everyone thinks, oh, he's this really, really nice, sweet guy. And even Kieran said, um, oh, your brother told me you're, like, so sweet, but really, like, you're really cruel and whatever, like that quote. Um, so, this is what I'm thinking, that this relates to Julian becoming somewhat evil. It just resembles it too much, and it's, it's, it's not a coincidence, I'm telling you that. Another one of those Easter egg quotes that I have is, um, you should never be scared of me. Never. You're one of the people I would never hurt. And that's from Julian. Now he says that to Emma. This is a thing. That just seems really, really, really too, like, obviously said, obviously stated. I don't know how to say this, but, like, it's so hard to explain what I'm trying to say. Because just saying that kind of, like, makes me feel like, oh... You know, why would someone say that? Maybe that's going to come and get them, you know, in book two. Emma's going to be like, ah, Julian, you said you never hurt me. You never be scared of me. He's going to be like, ah, oh, you know what? I take that back. I hope that never happens because I love Gemma so much. But, you know, that could happen because that is a quote that's sketchily placed there. And I, I'm not comfortable with it, to be honest. Even though I don't completely support this Julian becoming evil theory. Um... Yeah, I just don't like the way this quote is played. Now, this is a, another quote that is like the first quote I read to you that Kieran said. And you know what? This is what really confirmed, like, all my Easter eggs connecting together to that one Julian is evil theory. Because this one is just, ah, uh, you know, it's just so similar to the other one. And I'm just going to read to you. People are more than one thing. Warlocks? No less. I will not even hesitate to say that Malcolm once did much good before he did evil. It is one of the great lessons of growing up, learning that people can do both. That quote, 
I'm pretty sure it's said by Magnus. And this is a thing. This, 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 this is a thing, okay? Even though this relates to Malcolm, it's trying to distract you, this quote, okay? Because first it says people are more than one thing. That's basically what Kieran said. People are more than two sides, okay? But then it distracts you with the whole Warlock thing and Malcolm trying to do good, but then when you're distracted, it adds in this thing at the end and you, you don't even realize it because I didn't realize it the first time. And it says, it is one of the great lessons of growing up, learning that people can do both. Now, Julian and Emma aren't adults yet. They're 17 and 18, I believe, and this is the thing. They're not adults yet, they're still growing, they're still learning, and, you know, this is gonna be, this just seems, again, too sketchily placed here at this moment, because saying that just makes, like, Emma, maybe she's gonna realize, because she's still growing, she's still learning, she's gonna realize that Julian maybe wasn't who she thought he was, you know, he has this other side to her, and again, I hope this never happens, because I will start crying, and I will jump off the roof and die if that happens, <laughs> but that just seems like something, because this quote, I'm looking at it, like, it's trying to trick you, and it's just too sketchily placed there, and someone is going to turn evil in book two. Now with that whole theory with Julian turning evil, um, again, I said I didn't completely support that theory, and I don't. I don't think I ever will, but this is where it intertwines with my own theory coming into that theory that other people have, and it is that maybe it's not Julian becoming evil. Maybe it's someone else, because those quotes maybe just not only relate to Julian, because everyone's mind is on Julian right now, because he seems like the obvious choice. You know, he's going to find out about Emma Mark, he's going to get super jealous, like who wouldn't get jealous, okay? He's going to get super duper jealous and he's going to turn evil. Obvious, right? People are like saying that all over the place. But you don't really think that someone else might turn evil, but we just don't know who it is. That's my theory. It's not much of a theory to add on to that, but I think that it could be something. Because in my opinion, maybe I'm just being biased because I don't want Julian to turn evil, but it seems like that's just too much of an obvious choice for someone to become evil. It's just placed, you know, too much in front of us. We can see all of it. And the last thing I'm going to end this video off with is something that is going to prove that Gemma will be together. Okay? I don't care what anyone else says. Gemma will be together because of this quote. Okay? It's going to happen. And I'll read you now. Being told that love is forbidden does not kill it. It's strengthens it. Yes! Yes! Jeff Carstairs! That man has a way with words! I love him so much, okay? And you know what? It's true! It's true! You know, that happened with, you know, um, Hair and Gray Stairs? Hair and Gray Stairs is perfectly fine now. Everyone's happy. And it happened, technically happened with Jason Clary, you know? Uh, brother, sister, not allowed. Incest, you know, not allowed. But it strengthens it. Who, they're together now. They're probably going to get married in the next book. Alright? They will get married. Julia and Emma, they will have babies. Okay? It's going to happen. I will make sure it happens. You know, that's another sketchy quote, actually. You know? I love that quote. It's probably my favorite quote from the entire book. I just want to plaster it everywhere. It's I love it. So those are my crackpot theories for Lord of Shadows. This video I'm like sort of really nervous to put up because I'm afraid no one will watch it because it's, it's I feel like this weird, video is weird and my theories aren't good. But I hope you guys do enjoy this video. I like usually don't do things like this. I don't even make up theories for books in my head because I just like being surprised. But I don't know. I thought I'd post it anyways because I don't know. I just loved Lady Midnight that much. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!